Hi, and welcome to the Creative Geek, where we help makers of games, toys, and playful technology to develop their craft by understanding play. For example, through videos about extended game devices, such as this one. Right now, I'm making a sci-fi cockpit simulator, and you can follow along through the process and hopefully learn some things along the way. And if you like this combination of knowledge and making, click the subscribe button. That way you can follow along from cardboard prototype to fully functioning spaceship cockpit. So this is a button with an LED in it, but the LED is connected in a different way than I'm used to. So the LED is switched around and since it only makes light in one direction, I need to turn it around. And also this is the button and I want to remove that and put something else on there. You might wonder why we need to open this thing up and change it. And of course this is because we're not using it as intended. And one big reason is that the light is an LED. And I think everybody have heard the term LED by now. But you might not know what it actually stands for. And if you don't know what it stands for, you might think that LED is light emitting device. It's not. It's light emitting diode. And this is an important difference. Light emitting just means sending out light. And a diode is a special type of electronic device where electricity can only move in one direction. So it moves from the positive pole through the diode to ground. If you use a battery, it's going to say minus. Usually we draw this symbol to show it in a diagram. And an LED is just a special type of diode where light is emitted when electricity passes through it. However, light can only pass from one side to the other. So if we would turn this LED around and have the electricity move in this direction instead, it would not light up. And basically it would be an open circuit, as in when you don't press down the button. The button we're using have three connectors. And reading from the website where I bought it, it's described as a push activated switch that lights up when pressed, meaning the switch to the light is mechanical and connected to the button. It says that there are three poles. The first one is connected to the starter relay. The second one is connected to the positive terminal. And pole three must be earthed for button illumination upon activation. The original idea is that as long as you hold the button, it's going to be lit. So number two needs to be connected to plus, and number three needs to be connected to ground. And number one is what we would connect to one of the data pins if we were using an Arduino. After poking around a bit inside it, I figure out uh, that mechanically this is the switch between one and two. And between one and three is the diode that goes to ground. Meaning that if I press this, it connects. And it also connects the LED to ground and therefore it lights up. But we want the pressing of the button and the lighting to work independently of each other. And that means we're going to have to connect them to two different pins. One input pin for the button and one output pin for the LED both having a common ground. And since we can't change the mechanical parts without a lot of job, we're gonna work with what we have. This button is hard to change, so it's gonna stay between one and two. And the LED needs to stay between one and three. And that means we need to connect them to a common ground. And the only common place is number one. Number two, we need to connect the button pin. And number three, we need to connect the feedback pin. However, since electricity can't move from ground to positive, which is in the feedback pin, the LED is in the wrong direction. And we need to take it out and move it around. 
I am simplifying everything a little bit here, since when you use an LED, you also need to connect a resistor to not burn out the LED. And that's why you see me soldering on a small extra device onto the LED. I'm cutting an LED into shape because they were using a somewhat smaller footprint. Okay. Don't do this unless you need to. But I actually think it worked. This is the outside of the button where the text was, and I realized there's a bottom plate to that button. And you can put it inside here. And that makes it possible to put some kind of uh, plastic in here with a printout, so I can put whatever I want. But for now I will just make a small cutout, uh, so that I have something. Acceptable FSD frame shift drive, at least for now. Kerning letters by hand. It's kind of how they used to do it. For now, that's an acceptable FSD button. And now this works basically as any other combination of a button and an LED as you've seen before where I have buttons and then LEDs next to them. It's just that it's in the same place. This one is a ground wire that goes to both components. Here's the signal for the button and here's where I connect the LED. If this got you interested in the project, check out the full playlist over here. Or check some other creative geekiness over here. And remember to subscribe. See you around!